guys, Blabler here, and I thought of doing something a little bit more different than what I usually do, and talk about more um, about gaming gadgets. Because what I call a gaming gadget is some sort of a peripheral that can either enhance your gaming experience or maybe help you make videos. Because I get often messages on my YouTube inbox or through Facebook or Twitter, people asking me to check their stuff or giving them tips of how to make better videos. Um, the most generic response I always give is just start doing stuff. Uh, learn what other people do, um, notice what kind of uh, gear that they have, and learn how they speak, and from there you pretty much build your experience forward. Uh, if you want to go one step beyond of just starting something if you think you're ready for the next level, um, this is where capture cards come into place, and for those of you who don't know, it's a device that allows you to record video game footage from a console or whichever device that uses video outputs. There are several types of capture cards. Uh, there's, there are internal ones that you plug inside a computer, kind of like, you know, RAM memory or any kind of graphics card. But the more common ones that you see in stores are external ones that are more portable. Um, I've tried a few capture cards in the past, some haven't been all that great, uh, but my favorite one that I had the most positive experience with is easily um, the Game Capture HD by Elgato. This device I've been using since late 2012 and it's been amazing and I highly recommend it. But again, this device came out in 2012 um, and it's been a while. Uh, you know, out in the market, so obviously other companies, and even Elgato themselves, thought it's time to move on from what this device can do. Which is why this came out about a year ago, which is the Elgato HG60, the next evolution in the Elgato lineup. Now, the main question is that comes up to mind is, what is exactly the difference between those two capture cards? Well, this is exactly what this is video is for, because when I was trying to find research about those two cards, I mean, obviously I got the traditional list of stuff, you know, uh, one can do this and one can do that, great. But I thought it would be more fun to kind of have an overview in this video, as well as showing you some examples that I uh, managed to collect. So, without further ado, let's start the testing. Before we actually go to the game footage itself, let's talk about those two devices side by side. and talk about some of their more obvious differences, most notably the design. As you can easily tell, uh, the HD60 is about half as thick as the original model, and while the original is a more of a glossy finish, as you can see the reflection of the light over here, this is definitely not a reflective surface. It has this stripe over here, which is basically um, uh, for LED lights when you plug in the device, which is pretty cool. Um, not something that's a uh, deal breaker, but a neat thing, so to say. Um, but that's pretty much for someone who wants to get a portable device. Um, this 60 is more portable because it's a bit smaller. It's not that this one, however, is much heavier in comparison. But let's talk about some of the more important stuff. Both devices come with an HDMI and a USB cable, like right here, that you can plug directly to your computer. Um, so with the HDMI, you plug them out from the devices to your television. This is where the HD mount is on the 60, this is where the HD mount is on the original. And if you have an HD system like the Xbox 360, Wii U, um, PlayStation 4, etc., you plug them right here and HDMI in. Um, but this is where things get a bit different. With the HDMI 60 here, you have a microphone jack, and it's a very simple use. You just plug a simple microphone and record your commentary while you're playing your game, which is kind of neat, but if you're like me, you would rather use something like a USB microphone, something a bit more professional. But if you're starting out, just, you know, getting even like, you know, a simple like headphone, uh, headphones with a mic built in, uh, you can use that if you're just starting out, and I think uh, that's a cool feature for beginners, if anything. Uh, with this one, um, however, there is a very strong, uh, obvious omission, so to say, that uh, the original model has, and that's the AV-in. In other words, you can actually plug older video game consoles of this device uh, thanks to the inclusion of this, uh, the component adapter. You just plug that into the AV-in over here, as such and it gives you the ability to plug pretty much any console that supports component videos. So stuff like um, 
the original Xbox, the Wii, uh, PlayStation 2, and most importantly, PlayStation 3. Even though the PlayStation 3 supports HDMI, uh, when it comes to recording devices, there's this thing called HDCP that restricts um, recording with um, any kind of uh, recording devices. Uh, it's kind of a complicated thing that I'm not going to get into, and there is a way to bypass that. But I'm, again, I'm not going to delve into it. The point of the matter is, if you're starting out, um, Component will be the easiest way for you to tackle PS3. Uh, and thankfully, uh, you get the cable right here. I believe in the uh, in the original um, Elgato, the Game Capture HD, the original one, it comes included um, with a special cable that connects directly from your PS3 to the AVL jack, so that's something I highly recommend um, to use if you don't have a component cable for your PS3. Um, more importantly, if you don't have a game console that supports component, uh, you can actually use this also for composite consoles. Uh, composite is, by the way, the yellow cable, for those of you who don't know. So what you do in this case is that you plug the red and white of the audio right here in this, those spots and the yellow you actually plug right here to the green and voila it works you can actually see um, games uh, uh, using this cable alone which is pretty nifty but if you have a hard time memorizing this or you want a bit more options Elgato is offering this optional analog adapter that comes with a yellow jack so if, if it's a bit easier to color coordinate it so to say uh, but really what makes it cool is it also comes with an S video which is definitely a step above the composite level of cables and some various video game consoles use it such as the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis and the PlayStation family it is not as good as the component uh, a signal, but it's still very good. It's only 10 bucks, so um, if you want to have easier time plugging old-school video game consoles, um, this is definitely a viable option. I recommend it, um, and that alone makes it a bit uh, more friendly to use for retro gamers over the HD60. So what? So since they removed that feature, what's the big deal with the HD60? Well, the 60 in that device's name infers to the fact that it can record in 60 frames per second. However, this is a really big misconception, because the original one can also record in 60 frames per second, however, not in 1080p. It can only go up to 1080 in 30 frames per second, however, it can record 720p, which is a resolution lower than 1080, in 60 frames per second. The big advantage that this guy has over the original is the fact it can go all the way up to 1080 and 60 frames per, per second. So it gives you both the highest resolution and the smoothest frame rate, which that is on itself is a big deal. If you stream a lot or if you want to show, you know, like fast moving games like Call of Duty and whatnot, this is what you want. However, if that is not a big issue for you and you just want to record footage that would look nice on YouTube uh, for more basic purposes, 720p would look perfectly fine. In fact, there are not really that many games that support 1080p and 60 frames per second. In fact, uh, the majority of PS3 games don't even support 1080. They actually um, play in uh, 720p. A good example are pretty much a lot of the Sony first party games like Uncharted, for example, is like that. Um, but enough about that. Uh, we talked about the main differences between those two, and now the question rises that how does the game footage look like? Well, let's move on to the next test and find out. So, for my very first series of tests, I decided to test specifically the main feature of the HD60, which is uh, recording in 1080p and 60 frames per second, because that's really its selling point compared to the original. And to no shock at all, it works pretty well. The frame rate is pretty smooth, the resolution is nice, uh, but then I ran into an unfortunate snag when I played back the footage. Sometimes on the bottom half of the screen, you see those weird artifacts pop out of nowhere, like right there. And uh, it's something I didn't really see while I was recording the footage, but only when I played back. But moreover, besides that small little issue, I also ran into weird moments when frames were dropped altogether. Uh, there is a moment right here where I did not doctor this footage that all of a sudden uh, I end up in the other half of the court and uh, no idea why that happens. Uh, apparently it just drops frame uh, unwillingly. 
So, because I was trying to prove I'm not delusional, I went back to the Wii U menu, and I wanted to see if that actually happens if I just leave it up for a few seconds, and sadly it does. I have a lot of glitches and uh, frame drops right here, a lot of artifacts popping up, but it might be just my computer being old uh, and not being able to handle that kind of resolution, so keep that in mind. It might be just my computer, but I thought it would be fair to show you guys what I have experienced. So that's pretty much the result of my very first test. Um, we'll move on to the second test in which I try to test the lag for both the devices um, for streaming purposes because uh, you want to see exactly how much the lag is between the main screen, which you see my TV on the top over there, to the computer screen that's using the Elgato software. And this is basically for people who use a lot of streaming software like OBS and XSplit to calculate the amount of lag. And um, I'm going to put on the right the lag that I have above the devices. This right here is the HD60, and on the next test you'll see the original one. And while it's not a huge difference, the HD60 does win because it has a lower lag input than um, the original model. Uh, it might vary here and there. I tried to calculate my numbers as precisely as I could, but keep that in mind. It can be different for every one of us. So this is just something you want to keep in mind if you um, want to stream. You can still do it with the original fine. It's just more tinkering with it that you would have to do. Uh, but this is not what you want to see. You want to see how they perform side by side. So here we go, my final test, the HD versus the HD60. Left for the original, right for the HD60. And initial thought would show you that perhaps the HD, uh, HD original looks worse because it's more grayed out. It doesn't have as good of black colors. But I was mostly using just the original settings without tinkering anything at all. I didn't mess with the brightness, with the contrast, with the saturation at all. So that's the reason why it kind of looks like this. So from first glance, it might make you think that the HD60 does look better. But then I tried Soul Calibur for the Dreamcast here. And uh, yeah, you can barely tell if there is any difference whatsoever. In fact, uh, those first few scenes, I didn't even know I split the screen in the middle because of how crisp it looked. So... It just goes there to show that it, uh, if you just tinker with the original bit, it looks perfectly fine. Uh, moreover, uh, this is mostly about uh, sharpness quality. And uh, for me, for my uh, eyes, I can barely detect if there's any difference between, between the two of them. Uh, maybe the 60 is a little bit sharper, but uh, it's very hard to tell. Um, the thing is that if you pause the video and you magnify it, and you really try to find the minute details, you'd probably be able to uh, make a more sound deduction at the very end. But if you're just doing this for capturing footage and you're just showing the whole screen, I don't see any kind of difference. Um, the, the weird thing that happened here, though, towards the end of my Soul Calibur demo, is that um, there are moments when the, the split here in the half um, isn't exactly as cohesive. Um, there's some kind of like a frame rate difference between the two. I think it's because they record in different frame rates, which is rather odd. And I did have some frame rate issues with the original um, Elgato, but that is only because um, I record very long game footages, and that rarely happens. Usually, it only happens if I record um, more than two hours at a time. But it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. So that's really the point I'm trying to make here. Is the upgrade for the HD60 worth it if they look sort of the same? I personally don't think so. I mean, it, it, I like the fact it can do the, the 1080p 60fps. And I'm not even counting the glitches as part of the issue with the HD60. I'm more looking at it as the fact that it can do pretty much the same as the HD can do. And it can also support all their video game consoles for um, less of the price of the 60. Uh, but again, if you need that resolution and if you want to have easier time with the lag, that's definitely a viable option. Um, so whichever way you want to go, guys, the whole point of this video is not me dictating to, dictating to you what's best for you. You need to make that final call. I'm just telling you my opinion. So without further ado, let's move on to the final results. 
Well, I do like the HD60 slimmer design, the 1080p 60 frame per second recording, and the fact that there is less lag compared to the original model. I don't think it's necessary to upgrade it, especially if you only own the original Game Capture HD. Not only that it's cheaper by $30, but you can also plug your classic gaming consoles that use component composite, and if you buy the extra adapter, S-Video. Now, I had a lot of glitches with the HD60, that is true, but that could have been my computer. And it's not like the HD original was also perfect, I had some syncing with frame rate issue with longer videos, but that was a much rare occasion compared to the constant glitching of the HD60 caused me. If I had to choose between the two, it would be obviously the original model, but the HD60 is not a bad device by any means, it just means that my computer doesn't know how to handle it, maybe yours is gonna have better time. So this is it from me, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and follow me on social media, and I uh, look forward to make another video for you guys pretty soon. So, thanks for watching and take care.